Uh, Rita Webb, can you, uh, you share with our listeners a little bit about Sri Lanka, a little where it's at, who lives there, because uh, it certainly has uh, different uh, ethnic groups and religious groups living there. Uh, it has had a long struggle with the famed Tamil Tigers. Mm -hmm. uh, most recently, uh, we did follow in the news back in the spring how uh, there was a, a final resolution, supposedly, where the government finally defeated the Tamil Tigers. Give us some background about the situation there. Who were, who were the Tamil Tigers? Who are the Tamil Tigers? Uh, you start, we'll come up with more questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sri Lanka, most of us uh, in recent years came to know Sri Lanka in 2004 after the South Asian tsunami. Sri Lanka was very much affected by that. I was there at the time. Uh, it did uh, influence a lot of subsequent, subsequent events in Sri Lanka. But it's a small island nation off the southeastern tip of India. It is about half the size of Wisconsin, which is what I can picture since I'm from Wisconsin. And it has about three times the population, which is about 20 million. Within that 20 million, there are uh, some minority groups. One of uh, the majority group are called the Sinhalese. The Sinhalese are mostly Buddhist, although there are some Christians as well. The, ne the largest minority are the Tamils, who are mostly Hindu. And again, there are Christian, uh, Christian Tamils as well. And then there is about 8% of the population is Muslim and uh, a couple of very small uh, other groups. Uh, after 500 years of colonialism, first the Portuguese, the Dutch, and finally the British, uh, there was a colonial mentality that existed there. Uh, so the, the majority uh, population, the Sinhalese, uh, were very intent after 1948 in gaining independence that their country be under their control and united. Uh, unfortunately, that left some of the minorities out, particularly uh, the Tamils. And when throughout the 60s and 70s, uh, justice and equality and democracy did not seem to be shared as widely with the Tamil community, uh, young people got impatient and subsequent armed groups developed. Uh, the Tamil Tigers ultimately, uh, through a variety of, of unsavory and violent ways, uh, rose to the top of the heap and subsequently claimed that they were the sole representatives of the Tamil people, and a civil war was launched, officially dating from 83. So it became one of South Asia's longest running civil conflicts. Um, Nonviolent Peace Force uh, took advantage of a 2002 ceasefire right. uh, to try to see how we could support the civilians caught in this long running conflict. Uh, and in the period from 2002 to 2009, uh, the security situation gradually uh, deteriorated. The ceasefire did not hold. The government officially abrogated it in January of 2008, and the gloves came off uh, for the final uh, onslaught, which over the next one and a half years, uh, actually did uh, corner the Tamil Tigers in the northeast corner of the island. 300,000 refugees uh, approximately were trapped with them. Those people are now in internment and uh, what the government calls welfare camps. It's a very difficult task they have now to weed out uh, what they see as the remnants of the Tamil Tigers who are hiding among the civilian population, and also to uh, restore uh, this huge uh, population to their uh, villages. So that's the next great task, which is to win the peace. And that will, that will of course, uh, still take some time. 
I followed in the news the, those final days of the so-called so final days of the Tamil Tigers. Uh, you know, as a, a kind of a, a guy with some leftist roots, I used to think, oh, the Tamil Tigers were cool. Uh, obviously, uh, there's good and bad in all. Um, I'm not sure who, what side someone would root for or if it's just in a kind of an abysmal situation where all parties uh, of these various groups tend to be uh, violent and uh, not looking out for the good of the whole. Uh, what's your take on where things are at now? Are there, I know that there are different members of the Tamil community who have a kind of a different approach. I don't know if they're included much in the government. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what you see as the situation, even starting with the, the so-called uh, welfare camps or the refugee centers. Well, Nonviolent Peace Force uh, is able to work in conflict zones primarily because of our approach, which is a nonpartisan, nonsectarian approach. We can come into a conflict because we are outsiders. We are the eyes and ears of the international community, and we do not take a position, a political position, because that would undermine our ability to negotiate and uh, mediate and provide space for people to come together across their differences. So we do try to bring uh, different communities together at the grassroots level. Um, so we would not make uh, public naming and shaming kinds of statements. Otherwise, we would Good be- Good policy. <laughs> we would be persona non grata to do our work at all to work with the government in terms of convincing them that we have something of added value to contribute to the resettlement process of the displaced people, that the government's reputation uh, to the extent that they can be democratic and transparent and seeking uh, justice can be enhanced when they partner with the international community to do that. So we're working with them and trying to uh, gain access to some areas that so far we have not had access to. We continue to do our work in the north, in Jaffna, and in the east in Batikolo district. Uh, working with uh, child, ex-child soldiers, trying to get them connected uh, to uh, a sustainable future and a peaceful uh, completion of, of the, the trauma that they have experienced. We're working with human rights defenders to open up space for them to do the work because we know that they are... The Sri Lankan people are the experts, just like in Mindanao and every other country we'll go to. It's the local people that are the experts on war and peace, and we're there to see if there's a way that we can help them make progress and, and really attain permanent uh, solutions.